Um, so uh, we wrote Give Smart to be useful to folks, kind of a self-help tool. Uh, we created a website around that. Uh, it's been out uh, about about five weeks, and it's been interesting because the and I'll wrap up here. The notion of the right questions asked by personal philanthropists or their families seems to have touched a, a little bit of a nerve, and I suspect that people confronting those questions, and I think this has been true historically, if you went back to what Joel would say, it's, it's individuals, families confronting those questions that has driven an awful lot of the innovation that we've seen in the philanthropic space. I'm quiet there. Thank you. Um, so overall, I just wanted to kind of summarize to say I think the book really accurately reflects the field of strategic philanthropy today. I think it's critical that it focus attention on these important ideas around um, the values and clear outcomes that need to guide grant making. We really, um, that's not a given today. And it, particularly important as all these new billionaires are taking the billionaire pledge from Gates and Buffett and beginning to think about um, designing new foundations. So I'm glad, um, I really like the approach of multiple questions, kind of helping people think through um, what their interests are. But I would like to see more nuance in the discussion of foundation strategies, both about the dangers of exerting too much control over how a problem is solved and rigidly determining funding based on a pet solution, and also about the enormous potential for impact that can be realized by supporting highly effective nonprofits that are already proven on the ground, by harnessing distributive wisdom and distributed leadership in communities, and by fostering innovation. The chasm that separates the rarefied land of high-impact philanthropy and the natural state of philanthropy appear so formidable. One wonders if there are, are important features that our cartographers have overlooked, undervalued, or overstated when they map the features of these two great lands. Mapping, after all, is truly a matter of perspective. If the natural state of philanthropy is, as so many seem to agree, under performance, one might take issue with the standard by which it is measured. In the wake of the housing bubble, the collapse of the stock market, and unprecedented bailout of financial institutions by taxpayers, it seems reasonable to ask whether business sector, sector performance measures and management protocols provide the surest yardstick for taking stock of the philanthropic sector or even of individual giving. Do we undervalue the performance of the nonprofit sector because we measure it by private sector standards, asking of it what we would never expect of the marketplace? The often unstated fear of many nonprofit leaders who labor in the underperforming natural state of philanthropy and who are carried along in the tide of high impact results as a matter of professional necessity is that there are is that there are jobs that need doing populations that need serving and ideas that need advancing that at the end of the day fall outside the calculus of the results minded philanthropist are there things worth doing that cannot be counted programs worth funding that cannot be scaled organizations worth supporting that chronically underperform that philanthropy can be at ease with itself in an, in an underperforming environment, doing things that the marketplace undervalues, has been understood by many as one of its greatest strengths.